Hello, I'm Jason Burgos, and this is my interview with PFL fighter Herman Torado. I'm from Guam. You mm-hmm. know, it's a small island in the Pacific. Yeah. And um, the way that I kind of got into training was, like, uh, I used to be into, like, bodybuilding and stuff, you know? And then, like, uh, and my cousin was like, hey, man, you should try jiu-jitsu, you know? And I was like, I was like, nah, man, like, uh, I'm into bodybuilding, you know what I mean? Like, plus you guys are all small and skinny, like, I'll kick your ass, you know? <laughs> And, and my cousin was like 125 pounds, you know, he's like, he's like, nah, man, come to the gym. I'm telling you, like, like, I'll show you what's up. You know, I was like, man, I kick your ass, you know, <laughs> like 190 pounds, you know? And I was like, I was like 14 at the time, 14 mm-hmm. or 15, you know, like freshman in high school, but I was already big, you know, I was mm-hmm. just like lifting since I was like 11 years old, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, and then like, I went to the gym, you know, like, uh, and my cousin, he's like, you ready, man? He's like, Kick my ass, man! He fucking head kicked me. Fucking, yeah, like double leg slam me on my head. Like really get choked me, arm bar me like a hundred times. You know, then I went with another guy. He's like skinny, you know, lanky. Mm-hmm. But I was like, uh, fucking same thing, you know, same result. I'm getting like arm barred and shit, I'm getting tore up, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was like, fuck, like, this is embarrassing. <laughs> like I'm a huge muscular guy, and like, you know, instead of looking big and cool, you know, I rather I rather not really fight, you know. So then, uh, you know, then I started going, and then you know, then you see the MMA part, and then like. Uh, you know, um, started, you know, seeing the guys, what they go through and preparing. And then, you know, I get my ass kicked every fucking day, man. Like, mm-hmm. just get beat up. And then, like, I remember him saying, like, oh, you're back again. Like, oh, think you're, you know, you think you're tough. But back then, you know, I kind of got, like, the tell end era of the, the old school tradition, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, like, oh, you you, you, you think you want to be here? Like, you don't want to be here, motherfucker. Like, we're going to test <laughs> that, you know? Like, you know, you know they, they want to see if you had a heart, you know? Because if you yeah. don't, then you're a waste of time. Yep. You know, then they, they don't want to put any time into you, so they want to figure that out right in the beginning. So, like, oh, today you're going to spar, like, you know, these guys, they're, they're getting ready for a fight, you know? Like, amateur fight or, in, you know, a couple of pros, but you're going to spar them, you know? I'm like, all right, you know? So then, like, fucking get, get my ass kicked, you know? <laughs> And then you come back the next day, you know, they're like, oh, oh, you're back, you're back for more? Oh, perfect, you know, like, you know, we need, we need, um, sparring dummies, you know, so get my ass kicked again, <laughs> again. But probably went on for like a month and a half, you know, and then like, um, they're like, fuck man, this kid's fucking, all right, cool, you know, mm-hmm. and I remember like taking a shower and like the water hitting my face and I was like, I was like, oh, you know, like, well, why do I go back to that place? I'm so stupid. <laughs> and then, like, I went to school, and then my teacher saw me, and I had, like, purple ears. Oh. And, like, I had, like, like, two black eyes, and my face was, like, swollen on one side. And my teacher's like, go to the fucking office. What the fuck, you know? <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, they were like, what's going on at home? You know, yeah, like, yeah. Ask me. I was like, oh, no, like, I'm doing this stuff. So they called, you know, my, my, my dad, my dad came, he's like, like, what the fuck? You know, he's already pissed because he has to come to the school. What the fuck's going on? What did he do? You know, like, oh, you know, like, oh, sir, like, you did enough. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I didn't do nothing. Like, if I did it, trust me, he'll be dead. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, old, old, old school Chamo. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. No, no, no. He, he thinks he's tough. You know, he goes to that, does that MMA stuff. You know, that's what, that's who did that. Mm. And they're like, oh, okay. And they, they like cleared it up and, you know, they're like, go back to class, boy. And like, it's like, damn, man, now when I go home, I'm going to get my ass with my dad now. You know what I mean? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah. Yeah. So just like that. And, and, you know, like I kept going. And like I said, you know, I saw the guys coming up and what they went through and, you know, the attention they got and, and you know, how they were bonded together in the brotherhood. And, and I wanted to be a part of that, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, I wanted to earn my keep and, and be a part of something like that. And, and that's, that's how I uh, came about MMA. But then, you know, I saw... Also, like, when I started getting to the end of high school, like, how guys were just, like, stagnant. Like, you know, they'll win the titles on Guam, but then they'll just stay there and, like, stop doing it, and they'll go get a regular job, you know? And I was mm-hmm. like, man, if I'm going to do this, I'm I, I'm not going to be able to make it here, you know? Like, it's not going to take me to the, the highest platform. Right. You know, it's either that or go to school, and, you know, I hated school, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'd rather do this, so so what's the next best move, you know? And then I trained with Purebred and Fuck I in ground food on Guam, and, uh, you know, they had a sister gym called Unspeeded in San Diego, which was affiliated with Purebred with Ensign and Noe and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, man, I got a little family in San Diego, not much, but enough where I could probably, you know, ask for a little help, and I'm going to move out there. You mm-hmm. know, I-, I was 17 years old, and-, and so that's what I did, you know. And then, um, you know, like so- some of my I-, – I-, I moved with my cousin, and we kind of got into it, and he's like, oh, you know, get the fuck out of my house. And I was like, oh, man, like, where am I going to go? Yeah. Like, that's not my fucking problem, you know, like, figure it out. So I was like, fuck, man, like, so I had to get, like, telemarketing jobs because wow. that's the only jobs I could get, you know? Yeah. Like, I had, like, three of them, you know, and I was, like, doing that, and I was, like, sleeping in my car. And this and, is all, um, like, at 17, 18 years old? 
Yeah, yeah, like 18 years old. Wow. I just turned 18, so I was like sleeping in my car. Like I bought like this fucking cheap ass Mustang for like 900 bucks. I think it was like a 1997 <laughs> black, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and so like uh yeah man, I was just crashing there. I'd wake up in the morning, I go train, and um, and then uh, take a shower at the gym, and then go to work, man, and do those three jobs. And I would like buy like a loaf of bread and like maybe like you know a couple cans of tuna, and I would try to ration that to the day because I'm trying to eat clean, yeah. but at the same time I can't afford much. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm not gonna eat like hot dog and ramen, you know what I mean? I'm just like <laughs> fucking whore. That's like so, you know what I mean? It's like yeah, so yeah. bad. So I'm like over here like starving, like eating tuna and like, cause I got nowhere to cook, you know? So I need some instant healthy shit. So that's what I was doing, man. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, maybe if I had some extra money, I'd buy some lettuce and throw some mustard or some sriracha on that shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I, was, I was fucking eating that, you know? And then, then um, you know, uh, a friend of mine, you know, and his name's John, you know, he was a big, he was a, he was a pretty big deal, you know? Um, they, they don't really want me to mention him in the PFL, you know, so, but, uh, you know, he helped me out. He took me under his wing, you know, War Machine. And, okay. Ah, um, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. But they don't, they don't want it mentioned, you know, so that's why, you know, mm-hmm. like, uh, um, and, and, you know, he's like, he's like, you fucking sleep in your car? I was like, yeah, man, I got nowhere to go. He's like, why didn't you tell me, you know? He's like, fuck, come sleep in my house, you know, come sleep in my couch. So, you know, he like, let me crash there. And he, he guided me and he taught me, you know, like how to diet proper. He taught me. He taught me how to fight a little bit better, and, you know, he taught me the game of MMA and how to market myself and, you know, little things like that. And, you know, just kind of took me under his wing and stuff. And um, and then, uh, you know, just from there, I just took any fight I could. I was like, this is what I want to do. I'm determined. I already had made my decision that this is what I'm going to do. And uh, so I was all in, man. You know, I was doing what I had to just to, you know, survive so I can fight and and try to make a name for myself. And, And that's where I'm here now, man. I mean, so you you you're 28 now, right? So it's been 10 years. Where are you at 10 years uh, later financially? Uh, I mean, you've yeah, done well for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started working at a gym, you know, at at the gym undisputed as a trainer, you know, and then from there, you know, I would just fight when I can get fights and uh, fight on the side. But I was making good money at the gym, you know, because I was good at what I did, you know. I, I delivered results for personal training. I taught good classes. My classes are always packed because, okay. uh, you know, I. I saw the um, potential in some kids, and, you know, I always gave the – anything I do, man, I give it 100%. I give it my full best, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to half-ass it, you know? Like, I didn't look at it. Um, I worked with, like, Dominic Cruz, you oh, know, nice. like, the, the, the former UFC champ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was, like, living at the gym, too, man, back in the days, you know? Like, <laughs> and, like, so, Toby Amata, and, and okay. Nino, Ed Radcliffe, you know? Like, um, yeah, like, those guys, man, and Brandon Vera, you know? And, like, San Diego scene guys, you know? And, and I was like, you know – Everyone was kind of broke and stuff, and but I did what I had to, and you know I never hurt anyone, I never burned anyone, mm-hmm. never stole, and did nothing. You know I worked my butt off, and I uh, just kept working in the gym and teaching, and then you know a uh, position opened up, and I was getting a salary for a couple of years, so you know I was comfortable, but uh, I earned it, you know. Mm-hmm. And then uh, then I was just you know drifting around, dreams of fighting in the UFC, and you know this manager to that manager, and just never just never worked out for me then, so. I mean, so you know. uh, with this opportunity, what, what were your first thoughts when, like, the whole PFL format was released and they were going to do a season with standings and points and then a chance to win a million dollars after five fights? Uh, what were your original thoughts when you heard about, all about, about well, that? Well, originally, originally, um, you know, they had told me that the tournament was going to be my first fight, mm-hmm. um, you know, from the original contract. Like, oh, like, you you know, here's the money, and then we're going to start this thing. You know, it's supposed to start back in January, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I've been freaking training since last year, man. Like, wow. Like, getting ready to get ready for January, and they're like, oh, um, it's not going to happen in January. We're thinking March. And then I'm like, all right, I guess, man, you know, whatever. i got to be ready, you know? And, and the next thing you know, they're like, oh, uh, it's not until June. You know, and then the next thing you know, like Fitch leaves, and and uh, Yushin Okami leaves. Mm-hmm. You know, and then like they got to find replacement welterweights. So it's like, oh, uh, the welterweights aren't going to go till July now. And uh, on top of it, you got two preliminary fights that you got to earn your spot. I'm like, what, man? Like you guys told me I was in. That's why it's fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. I was over here thinking like I'm already in the tournament. Mm-hmm. Nah, man. Now I got to fight these two fights, and if I lose, I don't have a chance to get in. And I was like, man. And I took a fight. You know, like three weeks notice to fight Giles Zeferino was my last fight. I was like on a cruise ship with my family on my mm-hmm. honeymoon that I didn't get to spend. And like the, my agents, uh, Brian Hamper's like, Hey man, like I got a great opportunity. You want to fight this guy? And I'm like, bro, that's like so soon. I want to take He's like, yeah, man, you know, let's just get this fight and we'll get back in. The, we'll get in the UFC, you know, like, 
I was like, all right, man, let's do it, you know. And um, I thought, you know, doing that last minute, the PFL would have a little more consideration for me, you know. And like, mm-hmm. but now, like, now, like, oh, you got to fight these two prelim- preliminary. Fight. I'm like, whoa, whoa, all right. Well, that's not what we agreed to, but whatever, you know. I'm already in it. I signed. I agreed. I'm a fighter. And uh, it's a great opportunity for me to turn my life around. Really, you know, financially, I'm, I'm kind of good, you know. I opened my own gym, and I'm doing good and stuff. But, you know, this is a chance to expand my um, my future horizon, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because I'm not going to fight forever, you know. So I want to go in there and uh, make the best of it, become a world champion, and leave with the bang, man, and, and write my legacy, you know. And and, and um, who knows we'll go from there. I have a, a few business adventures that I have in mind, you know, mm-hmm. down the line that I've been thinking about besides my gym, you know. Um, yeah. I'm always, you know, hustling, trying to think of the next thing, you know what I mean, because I got a family to feed, you know, so. Is your contract with PFL based on, like, the duration of the season, or is it set as a set amount of months and fights like a usual MMA contract is? Yeah, well, these are uh, I signed for the tournament, but then they send me back a single bout contract for this bout. So these okay. first two bouts are preliminary bouts, so they're not tournament fights. So every, you know, I'm sure when we get to the tournament to the playoffs, they'll give me another contract. You know. So. Oh wow! But uh, I'm signed in. They gave me a small signing bonus, you know, to stay. Okay. Um, so you know, they 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 kind of took care of me and stuff like that. So. I mean, kudos to them. I appreciate that, you know, and uh, it helped out. You know, every little bit helps, you know. But, but like I said, you know, like um, I'm already looking towards um, – I just want to become a world champ, man, you know, like mm-hmm. – and uh, that that's my goal, you know, is, is to become a world champion. And if I am, great. If not, you know, I did my best and uh, it is what it is, you know. I mean, speak, speaking of – um, like it being preliminaries, the points are huge in this whole format they got, and then getting into playoffs and everything like that, and getting points early, finishing people early. Is that going to at all affect your strategy going to the fight? So, I mean, you, you are a guy that has a lot of first round finishes. It almost seems like this kind of format works for you. Right. You know, but um, as it comes, you know, because the fights are in sh- such a short amount of time, you, you don't want to get hurt, you know? Mm. So, um, but the thing is, you know, I'm a fighter, man. If I go in there, I fight. You know, I'm not in there to fucking hug and squeeze like a little scary cat and, and <laughs> bide my time and fucking win by the points. You know, I'm in there to fucking fight. Mm-hmm. That's what I am. I call myself a fighter. You know, like these other guys call themselves athletes in MMA. You know, like, now fuck that, man. You know, you know, sportsmen, nah, it's not a fucking sport. You know, like, I'm in there to fucking hurt you. Same thing the guy's trying to do me, you know. Mm-hmm. It, um, it's just who's going to hurt who first, you know. Yeah. And, um... You know, my mentality is just, that's how I was brought up in the old school way. You know, like, uh, um, if I'm still breathing, I'm still fucking coming. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? If I got some breath and I'm still conscious, I'm fighting, man. I'm fighting to the last fucking breath. And, you know, I'm going to do my best to put on an exciting, exciting fights for the fans and give them the money that, you know, give, give them what they deserve for the money they're, that they're paying, you know, to mm-hmm. see it. You know, so that's my goal. I want to be remembered as a fighter. You know, not as like, oh, that guy's like a, a great, you know, like athlete. You know, like I don't want to be like a fucking Ben Askren. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> fuck, man, the guy's great. I mean, I mean, the guy's fucking good, man. No doubt, the guy, yeah. you know, he's tough. Yeah. But fuck, man, you know what I mean? Everyone does nothing but bad things to say. I don't want to be like that. You know? Yeah. So, even if I lose, you know, even if I lose, I want to, I want to be like a, like a Vanley Silva. You know, like fuck, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yep. Like. That motherfucker's like a, a wild fucking dog, man. He's always fucking dangerous. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter what round. He's ready to fucking bite. He's coming hard, you know? So th- that's me, you know? So when fighting a, a foreign fighter working their way up, you know, there's not a lot of tape and, or video out there. I mean, have you, ha- has it been hard getting a video to see this guy and study him? Or, or do you not watch a lot of video? Like, what's your preparation in terms of seeing uh, what this guy offers? Well, I watched a little video, just a little bit. Um, I seen his last fight against Bobby Cooper and stuff, and I kind of just looked at the way he moved and stuff. But, you know, you can't really base it off of that because, you know, uh, styles make fights, you mm-hmm. know. So um, the way that he matched up against that fighter, you know, he might not match up against you that. He might not have the same reaction and stuff. There's a lot of variables that come into play. So, you know, you just look at the things that he's consistent with on a basis that he uses, you know, the certain – certain punches he throws or, you know, when he sets up a takedown or something like that, those are the kind of, you know, articulate things that I look for. And, um, you know, I kind of just narrow it down to that because it's MMA, man. Anything can happen, mm-hmm. you know. There's no there's no way that it's going to go. You have a game plan, and it never, ever, ever <laughs> goes to according to what you had planned in your mind, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. uh, so, you know, you just train, uh, train for uh, 
train for the worst, man, and just be ready to fucking scrap. Be ready to go to war, come in shape. Um, you know, be ready to fucking throw down, you know, toe to toe, but be a little smart, you know, mm-hmm. that's it. You know, I, I don't really have a game plan because, you know, I, that happened for me when I fought Bobby Green, my first fight at 17 mm-hmm. years old and it, it didn't, it didn't happen in Mexico, you know, and, and then I was panicking, like, what the fuck am I going to do now? You know what I mean? So, so you know, I kind of just play it as it goes, you know what I mean? And just, uh, just prepare myself the best that I can. That's, that's pretty much all you can do. Yeah. Uh, you were entering you were entering those perfect prime years where it's like youth and experience, and you have a ton of experience more than I even understood. Uh, do you feel that the PFL is going to get like the best version of you yet? And and and, are, and do you feel you're one of the favorites in the welterweight division? Um, I don't feel I'm one of the favorites, but that's fine. You know, I will be after I win this thing. But mm-hmm. um, you know, like I said, uh, they don't know who I am, but they will. And uh, yeah, like you said, I have a lot of experience. You know. I've been in the game for a minute and I've been in this tournament format, you know? So, um, I've seen, you know, high level guys like this, like I fought Rick Hahn and stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know, he didn't do shit to me. He just helped me against the cage and I gave him a little bit too much respect, you know, but you know, I was young. I was 23 years old. That was five years ago. You know, I'm way more mature than I was. You know, I'm a black belt in jujitsu. My, my, my jujitsu is a lot higher level than it was. My reaction, just like getting the calmness, of being in the cage and, and realizing that, you know, it's just like training, but this time you don't stop until the rest is, you know, mm-hmm. those are the, the maturity things that I'm bringing in here. And, uh, yeah, like you said, man, they're going to see the best Herman, most mature Herman Toronto. That's like I said, man, if I, you know, this is my ride right here. If I win the title, I win. And if I don't, I don't, because I really gave it my best. I, I worked my ass off harder than any fights. I can say that for sure. I mean, I've been in camp for like months man months on i mean like you know i'm just fucking ready to do my job i'm ready mm-hmm. to go out there and just fucking <laughs> explode with yeah. fireworks and and just fucking smash this motherfucker you know what i mean <laughs> all right so, so this is your third stint with like a major promotion you fought strike force you fought in, in bellator um do, is yeah. there i mean i probably know the answer but is there any and it added pressure in, in this in this stand with PFL to make as much money as you can and, and stick around a much longer tenure with the major company? Or is like it's, it's like you said, it's about putting on a good fight, win or lose, as long as you're, you know, satisfied with what you did. Yeah, there's always pressure. And if anyone says they're not, they're a fucking liar. You know what I mean? <laughs> there's there's you know, especially me, you know, like I'm representing my school, my gym, you know, there's a lot of pressure of that. And then you know how it is and you're, when your family's watching and everyone mm-hmm. that knows you that doesn't do what we do, in their eyes, you're like the man, you know, like, oh, he's fucking here to kick this guy's ass, no problem, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no, it's not like that, you know, but that's what they're thinking. So you got those kind of things in the back of your mind. And like I said, the pride of your school, you know, um, you know, your students are watching, you know, stuff like that. Everyone that hates you and wants to see you get your fucking ass kicked is watching, so you know that, you know, but... At the end of the day, once they close the fucking cage door, you can't see out. At least mm-hmm. I can't. I can't see anything beyond that fucking cage except the guy that I'm trying to fucking rip his head off. You know I mean? <laughs> so, you know, as the pressure, yeah, there's always pressure. There's always those butterflies, you know, but you just got to get them in line and fucking run them and direct them, you know, and, and take care of business and do what you do. It's almost like I'm not going to go in there and hurt this guy, but let's fucking get this done. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And uh, it's months on of, of hard work and sacrifice and, and just being away from your family and, you know, suffering and, and being picky. And, you know, a lot of people don't understand behind the scenes that your family goes through it with you as well. Mm-hmm. If you have a family, you yep. know, they get drug along for the ride. You know, you're you're irritated. You're cutting weight. You know, like you can't eat what they can eat. You got to go and eat special stuff sometimes. And, you know, just little variables like that that add up. And, you know, you can't just you know, shut their life out because, you know, it's a selfish sport, yeah. you know, it definitely is, you know, you go in the cage by yourself, but at the, you need your rest, you know, you need to eat, you need this, that, you know, you need four training sessions a day and that's time consuming. But when you got a wife and kids, mm-hmm. you know, you got to spread that sheet and you got a business to run to, you know, so it's tough, you know, but Hey, that's the road I chose. And, you know, so I'm going to, I'm going to own up to it. I'm going to be a man, you know? So last question. Thanks again for giving me time. It's, it's been awesome talking with you. Um, how big yeah, of, of a life changing opportunity is this chance at winning a million dollars? And if you win that million dollars, how big of a change in your life could it be? Oh, tremendous. You know, just like anyone else, you know, um, if I win that million dollars, I'm going to do the right thing with it. 
you know, I, like I said, I have some business adventures. I have some, uh, you know, things I would like to invest in to uh, prolong my future. So that way I can live a, a long and prosperous life and set my kids up. So, you know, they don't have to get punched in the face like that, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, they can use their brains and, and enjoy life. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So it's huge. It's, it's, it's tremendously life changing. It's not like just, you know, getting a quick, you know, quick buck, you know, like yeah. that's some serious money, you know? And if you know, how to, uh, you know, uh, distribute that money right and the proper things, you know, and it could change your life forever, you know, and you can really have a great life. So I'm looking forward to that. You know, I'm taking it one fight at a time, but every fight's going to be explosive, you know, so don't blink, you know, win or lose. I'm going out there. I'm going out on my shield, you know, I'm, I'm going to bring it, you know, and everyone's going to know who Herman Serrato is after these fights. For That's for damn sure. 